fine for me. Okay, thank you. Recording <clears throat> now? Um, okay, if you go to the minutes, everyone should be have in the chat is the CodeDMD link. So welcome everyone to the IoT Directorate. Um, first of all, we are uh, looking forward for your feedback through a survey. So please, if you have not filled it yet, uh, do it. Uh, it's going to be open until uh, end of the ITF. So it's just that uh, we want to know uh, what do you think about this uh, IoT Directorate and about the reviews, um, other information. So please um, fill it if you have not. So our draft agenda, uh, we are going to have a review of the ITF, R RTF, IoT groups. And then Michael Koster will speak about the own one DM and IoT schema. Um, so please uh, add your name here. And 60s, there is uh, Thomas or Pascal present. Since that is not the case. So it seems that it's is dormant, but the staff are still Pascal Tudor is on vacation uh -huh. this week, so. Ah, okay. Okay. okay, thank you. So, Ciflo, Carlos, Sveta. Hello, uh, this is Carlos here. So, thank you. yeah, Ciflo uh, plans to meet in the next ITF. So, uh, the working group status is as follows. And recently, it has been a batch of four new RFCs. Those are the address protected neighbor discovery, backbone router, and the two fragmentation related RFCs. And then there are uh, working group documents which are all in advanced stages. One is the deadline time draft in the RFC editor queue. Then there are two documents which have been evaluated by the ISG. These are IPv6 over NFC and IPv6 mesh over BLE. And then there are two other active working group documents, quite advanced as well. Uh, there's uh, pre-ISG reviews that have been done for the IPv6 over PLC draft. And uh, the use cases draft received a lot of feedback after the second working group last call, and it has been updated. And also in the meeting, we plan to discuss about using SHIC, which is a product of the LP1 working group for header compression in six low environments. Okay, thank you very much. There are some questions to Charles. Okay, it seems not be the case. So Ace. Sorry, I, I was slow finding my unmute. Um, so with six low, there, there has been some discussion of, of closing the working group. Is this still something that is being discussed or will, will this uh, continue? So I don't know uh, who needs to answer the question, but uh, I'm only aware of something that Eric uh, mentioned in an LP1 interim. So I'm not aware of any other uh, discussion about that. I don't know if Eric, maybe you could. Yeah, me. I'm not responsible for this group, right? This is the other Eric, uh, the Californian one, <laughs> uh, not the Belgian one. Uh, even if the blue sky is here today, uh, <laughs> it's the plan was to close it, Karsten. Uh, yes, mm -hmm. I recognize your voice. The plan was in the, the past. I don't know the situation right now, but as far as I know, yes, the plan is to close it. And um, the working group could stay dormant, right? Pretty much like a six stage for one one year, two years before being closed. And it, once even closed, the mailing list is still there. I mean, this usual procedure, but we do not expect anything happening there. Now, it's open, right? Kerstin, this is a working group for yes. the community. So if you have job to do, work to propose, it's wide open. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Further questions? Okay, thank you. For ACE, we have Daniel or Logan Andel. Okay. Someone that could provide input for ACE? Okay. It seems not be the case. So for HDF, Michael, Niklas? Hi, Niklas wrote some text Hi. there. Um, there's a 1.1 <clears throat> 1 .1 implementation draft, which is being designated um, and is being hackathon this week. And I can't tell you very much about the hackathon. Um, 
and that's really about it. I think things are going uh, well and as intended. Okay, thank you very much, Michael. Uh, comments, questions? Okay, this will not be the case. So, Seabor, Francesca, or Christian? Uh, Christian here. Um, yeah, the current current status is that we have uh, th that there are documents. Most most documents we work with are about um, kind of code points and additional things that you can do inside Seabor. Uh, one of these we are just sending out out of the working group, and two new came in today um, on how to express IP addresses in Seabor and how to um, how to store Seabor documents in a way that you don't need to store the file type kind of independently of it. Uh, the more the currently active documents um, that are not dealing with tags in, in that sense, but more with the more abstract um, structure, um, is Seaboard dictionary based compression, which would allow us to um, process process Seaboard items even though they re uh, remove redundant components in a way that is um, practical to do uh, even while it's without a dedicated uncompression step and additional control app operators for CDL, um, which is where the scope is still being extended a bit, but we hope to complete this, kind of get, get this completely done before the end of the year or by okay. October. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Christian. Do we have questions, comments? Okay, uh, about core, Jaime, Marco? Hi, uh, Marco here. Um, since November, we published RFC 8974, used to be known as stateless clients, was very much needed by 6th-2. Uh, otherwise, we have 14 documents in the group, but half of them are very advanced or even essentially done, uh, especially three are approved. Uh, two are under in last call as we speak, two are under Shepard write-up. Plus, we have two documents that passed working group last call with a few open points left. And we meet next week, and we scheduled already a next series of uh, six bi-weekly meetings starting end of April. Okay, great, thank you. Marco, do we have comment questions? Okay, Kose, Matt, Ivano, there is someone? No, someone can report someone something from Kose? No. Okay. Detnet, Lou, Low, Janos. Janos is uh, here. I can I can speak for it. Um, we have uh, three uh, relatively new RFCs published. I don't remember if uh, the last November ones were before or after ITF. But the the uh, data plane uh, uh, over specification for Detnet is uh, divided into multiple drafts uh, targeted to specific aspects. Uh, we have a framework, uh, data plane framework published in last November, and the IP data plane was published last November. And a very new one uh, is the MPLS published this January. And um, I would uh, call out uh, the MPLS one because that's that's hot. And uh, I would also highlight that includes um, uh, core that not features in in the standard stack. Uh, a document like the packet replication and elimination and ordering function details and so on and so forth. Uh, we have uh, further documents with the, with the RFC. Uh, actually, all the rest of the data plane uh, documents, uh, as we used to call them, we have the five core uh, documents. In addition to these three that are already RFC, we have the IP over MPLS and the MPLS over UDP, UDP over IP. Uh, in addition, uh, we have the so-called TSN um, uh, documents, data plane documents, which are also with, with the RFC editor. And in addition to the uh, data plane documents, we have the flow information uh, model, uh, also with the waiting for publication with the RFC editor. Uh, on top of all these, we have uh, uh, made the progress with with, uh, with our uh, further documents. The security document is is getting really uh, finalized, uh, or like hopefully getting to the RFC editor very soon. Uh, very final approval from the ISG, and 
we had one of uh, the documents, the bounded latency document at working group last call just recently passed. Uh, this uh, is the one uh, dedicated uh, to describe how to achieve uh, the bounded latency in that net. Also, we have made uh, very good progress uh, with the Yang uh, draft, uh, hopefully after this upcoming ITF uh, going for working group last call. That is largely based on, of course, uh, the data plane and the flow information uh, uh, documents that uh, configuration aspects in detail of, uh, of these uh, uh, other standards. A major uh, next step to be done is the OEM uh, work, which is still in progress and still, uh, still there is work uh, to be done. Um, we are expecting uh, to have a framework document for OEM which is not uh, not a working group document yet uh, and um, derived from it analogous to the data plane we we are uh, we have already two working group documents one for mpls oem and one for ip oem to address the specific uh, aspects of uh, the two uh, different data planes a very new uh, work uh, based on our recent recharter, relatively recent, like some time mid, mid last year, is a control airplane draft, which has been recently adopted by the uh, working group. And uh, that's uh, the main new aspect in, in, in the new charter. Um, control airplane includes um, uh, centralized and distributed control uh, plane approaches, as well as uh, the management plane aspects. That's why the new name. Uh, that's it in brief. Any questions? Okay, thank you very much, Janos. Stay complete. So for IoT Ops, Alexei or Henk? Do you, there is someone? Hi. Yeah, hi, this yeah. is Henk. Uh, yeah, so IoT Ops uh, has its uh, first hour session um, next week. Uh, all, of course, are welcome. COSI and ASDF uh, conflicts have been removed, luckily, uh, through um, secretary. And um, so for now, uh, we are fully packed. Uh, it's just an hour because uh, I think it, it was just a, it was a really lucky, lucky uh, hit that we got this hour. So uh, um, please expect uh, uh, only, uh, let's say, uh, ex um, representative uh, represent uh, presentations and here. Uh, so, so we have a, a agenda posted already, and um, and, and I think that we, we, we might uh, tr attempt to uh, uh, assess if there is uh, immediate interest for a, uh, a short-term uh, virtual interim that we can have more mic time, which is very important to us to actually make this a landing page for uh, uh, non-regular ITF uh, attendees uh, to, 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 uh, to flock to, and and also uh, to to uh, assess the uh, uh, first feedback on what we have planned as a first agenda. So please have a look at the agenda. And uh, uh, of course, if there's a conflict, join. Okay. okay, thank you very much, Henk. Do we have questions, comments? Okay, it seems not to be the case. So for Lake, they are not, they are not able to join. They are progressing in ad hoc specifications and having interrupt meetings, and they're going to analyze the protocol formally and verify on implementation, one implementation. So Elwick Mohitsen. Oh. Yes, sorry. Oh, okay. Um, Elwick Mohitsen. Uh, hi, can you hear me? Yes, hi Mohit. Uh, hi, hi. So I already updated the Kodi MD. Uh, we have one uh, draft which is su somewhat with the IESG, although it, it was on the telechat and was withdrawn. So this alternative elliptic curve representations, I believe there is another IESG meeting today where it will be discussed. So we'll find out what happens with that. Hopefully we can reach some consensus soon on how to proceed with that document. There's also the minimal ESP document which uh, completed the working group last call and is basically waiting for the shepherd write up and I contacted Zenkao to see if he can do the shepherd write up. I haven't heard back yet. Uh, the TCP usage guidance document was approved by the IESG 
and is now with the RFC editor. Uh, while I was preparing the notes for this meeting, I looked this uh, draft IETF Helvig cellular has been in the, in the RFC queue for now 1,884 days. I guess it's still not, in, in IETF terms, it's not probably still not a record. Uh, I think the only blocking uh, uh, draft is the resource directory. So hopefully this will progress soon. Uh, I also wanted to po point out that there are several working group adopted documents that haven't seen any activity and some have even expired. So there's the co-op security comparison document, uh, which was supposed to be due in 2018. The neighbor management guidance document was uh, supposed to be 2019 and the virtual reassembly or virtual assembly guidance document was again for March 2019. So I guess it's up to the authors if they want to like finish them off. Otherwise, Selvig has been pretty quiet and maybe if it remains quiet, we can discuss with the ADs to think about closing it down or, or not. We'll see. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Monkey. I just, let me, have... This is Barry. Let me just, just stick in a thing. Resource directory is just about finished. I'm just waiting for Christian to do a final check. So, Christian, what is the status on resource directory from you? The status of the resource directory is that um, as soon as the cutoff um, is over, there will be an update with all those small things, and I'll have to have one more word with Barry, uh, with sorry, with uh, Ben, uh, to finish those. But I expect that by the by the end of the cutoff, I will have the updated document for Excellent. the final review. Thanks. So uh, so I will get it to the RFC editor before I step down. Thanks. Okay. Thank, thank you very you much. But... Thank you. Do we have further questions or comments? Okay. LP1, Alex, Pascal is in vacation. Alex below? No? Okay, seems it's not present. Um, Rats, Nancy? Um, <clears throat> so I put some updates on the Rats. Uh, I'm hoping we can now issue a working group last call. There was a lot of activities on the architecture draft. Were um, the remote integrity verification draft, which is uh, like a TPM based profile for attestations, um, has been done. Uh, I've done the last review. We we closed the working group, group last call. Um, but as I was writing up the Shepherd write up, there's a lot of dependencies on other drafts um, in within RAT, um, and there are I think two that we haven't even adopted yet. So I'm waiting on Roman, our, our area director, to see if. Um, he wants us to just wait until some of these drafts get mature enough and we push them all together as a package or whether we can push them on now. Um, the eat draft, um, there are actually a couple of people, I believe, doing implementations. And so we're looking to do some early IANA assignments there. Um, but the draft is continuing to evolve, obviously. The same thing with the char draft, that's the um, Attestations for TPN using Yang, um, as well as the interaction models, uh, that draft we adopted um, prior to the uh, November um, session. Uh, and then there's a couple of other drafts that are under construction and they've been presented and discussed, but not yet adopted yet. So I'm presuming that they will come back and be discussed in next week. <clears throat> okay. Th okay, thank you very much, Nancy. Uh, do we have question comments? No, okay. Roll, for roll, we are going to have one hour meeting in the ATF one, uh, one zero. Uh, we are having interim meetings between ITF. So finally, we have in RFC editor use of repel info, and our leave uh, turn on A138 and efficient MPDO. And uh, now we are, are working to the DAO projection, enrollment priority, 
uh, while we are with the MOPEX and capabilities. Basically, it's the summary. Do we have questions? Okay, sweet. Dave, David, Bruce? Uh, yeah, I can talk about it. Uh, so, by the way, this week is the uh, IETF hackathon. There is a mm -hmm. project going on. Um, I just pinged the people to add it to the uh, hackathon wiki since it's not up there. Doing uh, TEEP, which then uses suit and rats. And so part of the hackathon this week is to have uh, experimenting with TEEP using suit. So that's great to see uh, actual projects starting to make use of things and test. Um, in terms of the documents, the suit architecture is sitting in the RFC editor's queue. The information model, also known as, or also containing the threat model, is in the IESG. And next week, we'll talk about the uh, how to address the IESG comments to get that one through. Uh, the manifest format is getting close to working group last call. We expect, or we hope to show, start that um, after IETF. We'll see how that goes. There is an open call for adoption on secure reporting of update status. Um, so how do you securely report back the results of attempting to do an install or an update? And then finally, there's also uh, a proposal to adopt a, uh, a MUD document for suit manifests, which was discussed last IETF meeting in terms of which group is the best group. And it was agreed that suit was the best group to cover it. Um, and of course, uh, we would like to adopt that too, but that one requires a charter update. And so we're in the process of uh, working with the AD on charter update stuff. So any questions on suit? All right, Russ, anything else you'd like to add? No, you covered it well. Okay, thank you very much, Dave. Uh, for tip, Kiru, Nancy. <clears throat> I think, Dave, you, you covered some of the, the stuff um, on the TEEP protocol stuff. The um, the TEEP architecture draft should be done. I haven't synced up with Tito. He was going to be the one to shepherd it, but if it's not done, it should be closed. Um, and I've noticed there's been a lot of traffic with the um, with the protocol draft itself, as uh, Dave mentioned. There's implementation using suit. Um, and so I'm presuming that, that the draft is maturing and um, my question for next week would be, you know, um, timeline for readiness for that draft as well. That's it. Okay. Thank you very much, Nancy. Do we have comment questions? Okay. Things to see, Richard Group. Ari, Karsten? Uh, yeah, thanks. I can take this one. Um, so in Hilton Archie, we have had recent work on, on three different documents and uh, all of these will be on the agenda for our summary meeting at IDF 110. So the three documents are the IODH challenges and functions, um, secure bootstrapping, and then finally a, a more recent draft called a taxonomy of operational security considerations for manufacturer installed keys and trust anchors. Um, I know for, for the First two documents, there have been something going on a bit longer at, at the research group. In particular, the IoT Edge draft, we think it's getting ready for publication. And the secure bootstrapping, we think it's not getting mature enough for adoption. And the last draft is much more recent, uh, but will be now presented at the RG meeting. Uh, regarding that work, we have identified it's all good to be synchronized with, for example, RATS, Anima, and IoT Ops uh, groups on the security documents, because clearly we have there a lot of common interests we have already been. Uh, discussing with some of the chairs and and, and present and send those on, on the mailing list. There are also uh, five other documents that have been recently submitted. Those have not been yet discussed on the on the mailing list. We did approach the authors to ask what they what they are are what's their plan regarding them. But if those titles um, sound interesting to you, go ahead and check out the details on the data tracker. Uh, then we have had this long running wishy activity. <clears throat> it's been recently focusing quite a bit on supporting the 1DM ASTF work. We had very good collaboration there, good progress. And we had a, a wishy online meeting uh, yesterday where we were discussing the way, way forward with wishy. Also, we are have this ongoing hackathon activity, the uh, ASTF wishy hackathon that, that was mentioned earlier. That's all from Tinkling RT. Okay. Thank you very much, Ari. Do we have question comments? Yeah, Ari, this is Eric here. Any chance to get more explanation on Wishy? 
Oh, sorry. <laughs> so we see for those who, who haven't heard the acronym before is this work on IoT semantic and hypermedia interoperability. So it's it started as a, a uh, it was a workshop um, four years ago, maybe. Uh, it's been it's been a while. Uh, and really focusing on like what we can work on semantics and hypermedia in order to enhance interoperability for, for IoT settings. Uh, we've been tackling different topics uh, around, around that in this kind of a subset of work of, of Tinkling RG with a, a series of, of online meetings. I can okay. post a link to the Wishy activity on the notes for more details. This will be welcome, at least by me. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Further question, comments? Okay, Coin, Jeffrey, Eve, Marie Jose, Jose. Someone from Coin? Someone can report from Coin? Okay. Ro, Rick, Eve? No one from Ro? Okay. Um, okay, now we have new plan ITF, IRTF activities. Uh, are you aware of some of them? Do you want to share? Okay. So for the updates from oh, I'm sorry. Never mind. Uh, no, yes, uh, Michael. We can uh, discuss about coin or row. No, sorry, I was I had a an item in the agenda. Sorry. Uh, okay. Um, so update from other IoT groups, IoT SFF. Well, Someone can record. Right. Yeah, so yeah. that was I wrote and filled this in. So the IoT IoT Security Foundation is a UK uh, consortium. Um, many of your companies are already members, um, and they started an effort called Many Secured. It has a number of different goals, but one of them is specifically dealing with the problem of how would a browser in a home be able to do HTTPS with a IoT device in the home and how would it would certificates work or would they work or do we need something else? Um, and I've encouraged the this working group to come and talk at IoT Ops. Um, I don't think it'll happen next week, um, uh, but it will happen. Um, if you're not a member of IoT SF, there's some ability for us to invite you as an, a, as an external expert um contact me um and uh but i'm really hoping that this work will actually be much more um visible than other bits of their work um and um related in it thing is there is global platform is having an onboarding um session uh workshop uh the first of which is march 17th i believe elliot has posted a uh, the invitation to a couple of lists, um, and there is a fair bit of crossover in content between the different uh, between these things. Okay, great. Thank you very much, Michael. Do we have questions or comments? Okay. One DM, Michael uh, Coster. Yeah. Um, so. One data model, one DM stands for one data model. And the goal when we started in uh, late 2019 is to normalize IoT information models across the industry um, in, in multiple verticals. So not a very ambitious goal, clearly, but um, that's what we wanted to do. And we had a lot of SDOs involved, so we thought that was a worth, worthy goal. Um, our progress is, is Pretty good. The first thing we needed to do was create a common language, which we've done now, and that is uh, being standardized in the ASDF working group. That was a precondition to doing the rest of the work. So at this point, we have 200, uh, some 200 odd models that have been contributed from different SDOs that represent you know, mainstream IoT as well as you know a few other like industrial. And so we have IPSO lightweight into M. We have OCF. We have some model from Bluetooth Mesh and from Zigbee, uh, which is also the same modeling as Chip will use. 
Um, and our next steps are to to basically drive the convergence of, of the models that we have in the uh, in the in the what we call the playground and create uh, some consensus based models that we can publish for people anyone in, in IoT to use for their for their devices. And of course, we'll always be accepting new models and and uh, trying to keep up with the the pace of uh, new types of IoT uh, services and devices. We also find that we are uh, we're going to be expanding the scope of the information models. We've had some interest from the community around electronic data sheets, and also uh, uh, another example, textile manufacturing equipment. They're looking for a common language, but uh, there there are numerous others where they're basically looking for a common information model, and SDF seems to be close to what what they're looking for. So we also have some uh, some uh, ISO IEC. Activities in, in a couple of groups, SC41, and I didn't mention that in the I'll write that in SC41, and um, there's another one I can't recall right off, off the top of my head. And uh, we also provide then use cases back to the ASDF group for the evolution of the SDF language. As people need new features, then we sort of roll them up into use case requirements and, and uh, work them through ASDF. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Do we have comment questions? Okay. Uh, could you please provide information for IoT schema as well? Yeah. Yeah. So IoT schema, um, we started quite a bit earlier, back around 2000, 2016, after the IoT SI, the uh, Semantic Interoperability Workshop, that was an IAB uh, workshop back in, I think it was 2016 in, in March. So we started IoT Schema with the buy-in of schema.org. There were some folks we worked with in Google, uh, Dan, Dan B notably, but also um, some other folks. And the, the goal is to provide an extension to schema.org so users of schema.org have access to IoT categories that they can you know, get measurements from IoT devices and maybe control things through uh, semantic interfaces provided on web pages, like the way schema.org uh, has been used. And our progress is we've got about 20 or 30 example models that are all aligned with the, the same ontology pattern that we use in one data model, and that's common across many. Uh, some of the wishy work has, has shown that we really have some common um, patterns across all IoT models, uh, semantic models, and, and at that level. And we pretty much adopted those in IoT schema as well. So we, we kind of bring together the world of schema.org and the world of IoT. Those are also used in um, what W3C Web of Things PlugFest. So with our, our, since they're RDF format, they're, they're really friendly to thing description and are, are, have been pretty much the canonical semantic uh, anchors for thing descriptions. If you want to say this is a light bulb or this has color control or this turns something on and off, we point to schema.org usually. Of course, we can point to 1DM and other places as well. Um, but basically, we're, we're now ready to deploy this extension point in schema.org. We've, we've worked through uh, some fairly large architectural issues with the, the way IoT data works versus the way schema.org was set up. And uh, we're ready to do that. Dan V is ready to, to sort of add some stuff to schema.org so we can start testing this out you know, in the real world. And we're uh, of course, looking to extend the models and, and get more models in so that, uh, but we realize that they need to be a little more abstract than the ones in 1DM because people aren't building devices, they're sort of working the other direction up the stack. So, um, uh, and that activity has not been progressing a lot, just uh, mainly because we haven't had a lot of uh, resources to put on it, but that uh, looks like that's changing and we'll be able to start making some progress now and get to the next step of having actual schema.org reference you can use that, that uses IoT uh, categories. Okay, great. Thank you very much, mm -hmm. Michael. Do we have comment and questions? Okay. Uh, W3C, Web of Things, Ari, you write, wrote something? Well, I, I wrote something. So uh -huh. um, we, we will have a segment at the Think of Thing Research Group summary meeting about the report from W3C Web of Things. So they, they are very active. They, they have a candidate recommendation deadline two months from now. 
uh, so they, they're really uh, busy nailing things down. Um, and uh, if you're interested in, in uh, data modeling for IoT, uh, this is uh, really an uh, activity you want to watch. Okay, great. Thank you very much, Karsten. Uh, do we have common questions? Okay, so I think uh, we have addressed the topic of our meeting. Uh, so if we don't have further comments, we can end the meeting. So thank you very much. And if you don't mind, Ines, give me yes. two seconds to thank and welcome the two newcomers in our group, which is uh, Christians and Logan Aden, even if he's not here right now. Um, there is also a topic that might be interesting by Ted Lemon. Uh, I'm taking you by surprise, Ted, but your stub network may be applicable as well to IoT. If you are ready, can you explain what your two drafts are in uh, one or two minutes? If you are sorry, I had to, had to find the mute button. I wasn't uh, <laughs> I wasn't expecting you to do that, but sure. Um, um, yeah, so. Uh, so there's two drafts that, that uh, there's actually quite a few drafts that are going on, but but those two are probably particularly in interesting. Um, back when we were trying to figure out how to connect uh, meshes to uh, to IP networks uh, in a like reasonable and scalable way, uh, we looked at what was available and, and didn't really find anything that was going to do the job for us. And so um, I wrote a problem statement about a year ago. That's the Stub Networks PS document. Um, which just talks about kind of the general problem and the solutions that we explored. Um, and just recently, uh, I think right before the posting deadline in theory, <laughs> although there was a little bit of uh, trouble with that, um, posted a document that describes the actual solution that we implemented. Um, and so uh, I think that this is a solution that might be of general interest. And uh, although I say that we implemented it, it's it's largely operational practices like how do you set up RAs? Uh, what prefixes do you advertise? How do you avoid, you know, conflicts and so forth? And so, um, even though even though there's actually like you know existing deployments of this stuff right now, that doesn't mean that it's set in cast in stone and that we can't make changes. And so, I think it would be really uh, helpful if uh, folks who are interested in the problem of connecting IoT networks to uh, infrastructure networks um, and and advertising services on the infrastructure networks could take a look at the document um, and maybe talk about the things that they'd like to see in it um, or the things that they don't understand how to implement or, you know, the usual things that that uh, that you do in a document review. Um, I think that would be very helpful. Uh, the idea basically is that IoT networks generally aren't transit networks. You don't usually route packets through them and therefore they're stub networks. That means they're they're connecting to infrastructure, but but that's all they're doing. They're not. They're not doing anything special. And because that's a fairly restricted use case, it gives you some um, some simplifications that make it possible to automatically connect stub networks to infrastructure in ways that that are useful. Uh, the the base use case that we uh, that we approached was just like, okay, so I've got you know a thread accessory that needs to be connect it needs to be discoverable on my home network, same way that a Wi-Fi accessory is discover discoverable in my home network. I need to be able to reach it from my home network. Um, and so uh, how do I make that happen? And we use uh, a number of IETF protocols. There's a service registration protocol that's being worked on in DNSSD. We use that for uh, for the service advertising part. Um, and then we and just use RAs and, and uh, you know, uh, router information options and prefix information options to establish connectivity between the stub and the adjacent infrastructure network. Um, if you want more than that, obviously you have to, you have to get into the routing uh, fabric of the network and that's also discussed in the document. So that's, that's the basic, uh, not quite elevator pitch. Uh, so if anybody has any questions about that, I'd be happy to answer them. Well, and not specifically, but um, is there anyone here that can report this back to the Zigbee Alliance project chip? Because I'm afraid they're going to go off and do a whole bunch of different stuff to solve the same problem. And mostly about the routing, but also the advertisement stuff. There's a, there's a bunch of, um, I don't see, I don't see any of the uh, folks like, uh, 
Yeah, okay. Anyway, um, maybe I'll try to do that. Yeah, I mean, if you're involved in Project Chip, I would definitely, I would definitely get involved in that conversation. Yeah, um, I was well, not and, anymore formally, but I oh, can still, okay. I can still report this into them. I'll do that. Okay, cool. Yeah, I mean, I can't really talk about that because Chip is a little bit the the the. Uh, yeah, but they're definitely connecting thread networks to infrastructure in your home as a stub network, where you know you might have something on other. And there are a bunch of other issues that you probably have figured out also. So. Yeah, I won't repeat them yeah. here. Right. I mean, you know, to be clear, this is this is work that I've presented to Thread, and so so uh, and well, okay. You know, so I can't... if Grant if Grant has uh, been exposed to it, then he'll be aware of it. That'll be a, right. a best entry yeah. point anyway. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I should say this is work that so so this this code is actually running in the HomePod Mini. That's code that I wrote, and it's also there's there's some there's an independent implementation by Google. So this is fairly mature at this point in the sense of like it's being used again doesn't mean that we can't make changes if we need to um and for those who are actually uh work for companies that are members of the chip alliance or the thread group um more participation would be highly welcome i mean i think we've done a good job but but more eyes is always better Okay, thank you, Ted. And you uh, discussing those two drafts in the Omnet mailing list, right? That's that's correct. They're they're be, they're going to be discussed in the Homenet working group. Um, I think it's on Friday of next week. Um, yeah, and if people are interested in the service discovery aspect of it, that's also being discussed in the same. The DNSSD and Homenet are are meeting at the same time, and sharing that that uh, that time slot. So. Uh, so the service registration and also the advertising proxy service registration is basically. Uh, a way to do DNS updates that doesn't require prior establishment of trust, but is not completely stupid. Um, and uh, advertising proxy is okay. Now that you've got those updates, how do you make them available on the local link? So both of those are also key technologies that that um, that are really enabling the the um, you know the ability to just have like a thread accessory sitting on a thread network and yet have it be visible and usable on the Wi-Fi network. So like right now, I have about eight or ten thread accessories. Um, that I can just control from my from my iPhone because they appear on the Wi-Fi as services. Okay, Ines, uh, I guess it's the end of the meeting. This is Eric again. So I would love to would like to thank you, you, Ari, and Samita, of course, for organizing this as usual. Okay, thank you. Thank so you. Much. Thank you very Thank much, Ivan. You and Thank you, everyone. Bye bye. Have a great journey. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.